In Google Sheets, we can create dynamic filters to help us look at different aspects of our data easily without changing the original data. This is a vital tool for analysis and presentation, but also valuable for error checking. You can use it to sort data by different columns or background colors. You can filter in or out values. Uh, for example, values greater than a range or less than a range. So how do we do this? Well, first we select a range that you want to change. In our case, we have here a set of classes and the three tests for the semester. So we have 15 classes here and each one is alternating uh, in color in column C. We've got section one, section two, section three, all the way down to the bottom. We want to select all of these. So what I'm going to do is click on this cell A1 and then I'm going to hold shift down to cell F1. And then I'll hold control shift and the arrow key on my keyboard down to the bottom to select the range. Next, I can either go to data up here and click create filter, or what I like to do is use this sub menu here and click on create filter here. So let's do that. Bang. Cool. Let's head back up to the top. And as you can see across the top bar, we've got these little highlighted drop down menus here to allow us to get into our sorting or filtering sub menus. Now, if some of your headers are hidden, like this, for example, you can just double click them and they will expand out so you can see what has been hidden by the drop down arrows. Great, so let's look at a quick example. If I click on this drop down menu for the name, you can see we've got sort A to Z or sort Z to A, or we can sort by color. Let's sort from A to Z for our names here. And you can see now that when I sort this A to Z, all its corresponding data on the other columns will match it. And if I sort in reverse order from Z to A, the same thing happens, but now Z is at the top. Now, when it says sort A to Z, this also acts on numbers. So A to Z here, sort A to Z, you can see that uh, 2100111, and if I Z to A, 2100554. So A to Z will start with the smallest number to the largest, and Z to A, largest number to the smallest. What if we wanted to sort by background color? In this class here, I have uh, a set of background colors that I've used to identify odd and even sections. If I click this drop down menu here, I can go sort by color, and we've got fill color here or text color. Let's look at the fill color. And let's say I want to sort and have all these dark blue background colors up the top and all the white ones down the bottom. Let's see what that looks like. And now it's sorted. Now they're not in any particular order, but we'll get to that in a minute. But you can see now that all the blue ones are at the top and then all the white ones are down the bottom. We can sort in steps to make sure that these all these blue ones were in numerical order first. What we could do there is click on this again and sort A to Z. And then we could sort by a color. Fill color, blue, and now we've got two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, and then we go into the odd numbers, just like that. Super easy. We can do something similar too. So for example, we probably want to present our classes by section and then by first name for ease of searching for users. Let's go back here. And if I click on my class and I wanted to sort by class, I'm gonna have a problem. Let me show you. Let me sort A to Z here. And now if I wanted to sort the names here alphabetically, then this class is going to change. Take a look here. Okay, so how do we fix that up? Well, let's reverse this so you can actually see a decent change. So if I go to name here and I sort A to Z, and then I sort by class, you can see now that each class is in alphabetical order. So just be wary of your steps you take to sort your data. Okay. Again, we can sort by grades as well. Let's say we want to sort each class by highest grade for the tests and then keep them in their class. Well, again, that'd be like what we did earlier where we sorted the name first before we sorted the class. So let's sort our, our grades first before we sort our class. So again, test one, A to Z. Oops, let's do it in uh, reverse order. So test one, Z to A. Test two, Z to A. Test three, Z to A, awesome. And then let's do our class, A to Z. 
And now we should have our highest grades at the top for each class. So we've got 19, 20 here, and then uh, lane here, we've got one zero zero down the bottom and you can see they're decreasing. And then look at the second class. We've got all 20s up here and it's reducing down for that class as well and so on and so forth through the classes. Cool, that's sorting, but so what if we just want to filter out and see only specific things within this, uh, within this data? Let's have a look at this. So first we could filter by values, and this is probably the most common approach that I use. So for example, if I wanted to filter out section 14 and 10, I would just go down to the bottom here and find section 14 and click and find section 10. Here it is, and click. And if I click OK, we scroll down, we'll head on down to 9. And below 9, we've got 11, so 10's removed. And after 13, we've got here is 13, here's 15, so 14's been removed as well. As you notice up the top here, you can see now we've got a little filter button to show that we've filtered out something. So let's click on that again. And to quickly put these back in, we can just click on select all or to remove everything and then maybe just add English one, for example, we can click here and it's done. All right, let's go back to select all again. Let's filter out students who got 20 in the first test, but only 18 and 19 in the second and third test. So let's go over here. We've got test one. Let's clear all, scroll down and only click on 20 here. So we should have a list of all the students who got 20. And now we want to remove uh, we want to clear and then we don't want anyone to have 20 but we wanted to have everyone who had 18 and 90 just to see if they didn't do quite as well in test 2. Let's click on that and again with test 3. So we'll click on that and we'll scroll uh, 18 and 19 we'll keep those two there and now we have a list of all the students who got 20 in test 1 but only got 18 a score of 18 or 19 out of 20 in test 2 and test 3. Great. So let's take those off again. So we can click on them and select all, hit OK. Or sometimes it's a little bit easier just to turn off the filter and that re returns everything back. And then we can select again, A1. This time I'll hit Control, Shift and right arrow. Get across and Control, Shift and down arrow to select everything. Hit my filter and I'll Control, Shift up to get myself to the top of the page. Great. Instead of sorting by color, we can filter by color. So this time we can click, click on our class again. And we can go down to filter by color. And this one says none at the moment. But if I go filter color and we'll just keep all the blue ones, then all our white odd sections are missing. Now you notice here there's some alternating colors here. And that's using the format alternating color approach. So let's take these classes off and we can go none to get rid of that and if i try to filter by color here these are all grayed out because alternating color isn't included in the uh, filter by color method here okay filter by condition so let's go over to name here and hit the drop down menu and you can see the next one in our list here is filter by condition this will expand and we'll have a little drop down menu here now, if you've been playing along, you've probably seen something like this in our conditional formatting tutorial, and it's exactly the same. So I might say something like uh, text contains, and let's say we want to see all the grades for students whose name that start with ST. And we scroll down, click OK. And anyone whose name has ST in it now is visible for us to see. Great, let's undo that one. We can go back to our filter condition here and we can go back here, click on it to expand, go to none, okay, and then we're back in the game. Okay, that's pretty handy. What if we want to find a list of students whose last ID number is three for some reason? So we can open up our ID section here, filter by condition, go down and find text ends with and type in three and scroll down and click Okay, done. Now we have all the students whose last ID number is a three. Great, let's take that off. Click on the filter again, go down and click on none, click okay, and we're all back to normal. Okay, so what about if we wanna look at all the students who got a C in each of their tests? 
all the columns test 1, test 2 and test 3, they need to have got a C, which is between the range of 12 and 14. So let me, let's hit the drop down menu. And again, we can just take untick these or we can move a bit faster here by going to filter by condition. Scroll down and we'll find the number values. So we've got greater than, less than, no, that's, that might be handy, but let's do is between. And we'll say is between for a C grade, it is a 12 and a 14. We'll click OK and then we'll hit test two. We'll do the same thing, filter by condition. I'll go is between 12 and 14 and click OK and do the last one and filter condition is between and 12 and 14. Scroll down and click OK. Done. So now we have all the students who got a C on every single test, which is a fairly small number, 12, 13, 13 down the bottom here, 14, 14, 12 here. So everything is fine. Okay, so let's undo these. Like I said earlier, the fastest way to undo it is just to go here and click on turn off filtering. That's it. In the next tutorial, we're going to expand on this and talk about filter views. If you enjoyed the tutorial, hit the like button and I'll see you in the next tutorial.